Hello guys, I'm Peter. Welcome back to Shapeless new tutorial series in which I show you how I sculpt a dragon. In the previous parts we talked about reference images, blockout, anatomy and alphas. In this part I will demonstrate the painting process and then export the model and import it into Blender to create a render. In ShapeLab you can use vertex paint to directly paint on the model's vertices. This allows you to create detailed patterns and smooth color transitions. Enabling the topo adds new vertices dynamically by painting, giving you more flexibility and detail. There are two painting tools available, the paintbrush and the paint bucket. With the paintbrush you can freely paint on the surface, apply alphas for different patterns and adjust PVR properties like roughness, metalness and emission. This lets you paint surface with metallic, matte or glowing effects. The paint bucket tools fills the entire surface at once without using alphas, but you can still adjust PBR presets and values with it. Let's get started. First I use the paint bucket to apply a darker, more intense base color to the dragon, onto which I layer the subsequent paints. I gradually transition from the darker color towards the lighter, adjusting the opacity as I go. Now I disable the resolution and paint the head with alcohol yellow, leaving out the eyes to keep them darker. I apply multiple coats to the lighter areas. The dragon's lower part will be lighter, while the back will be darker. Next, I paint the lower parts of the neck, leaving a bit of the lower red color visible at the sides. This is how I paint the entire body. Now that the dragon has some color, I show you the scenes. This way you can see how different lighting conditions affect the colors. I choose a brighter scene because I think it's better for painting. I select an even lighter color and apply it to the lower parts again. Next comes the relaxing part of the painting, where I start adding scales to the head using a lighter tone.
On the neck I paint only a few scales in a line that runs along its length. You don't have to paint each scale individually, you can switch to spray mode. This way it won't be as accurate but much faster. When I reach the shoulders, I continue the stripe down to the forearm. On the upper arm and forearm, I paint only the larger round scales. It's a good idea to reduce the fall off here, so the scales stand out more. I repeat the same process on the legs. For the tail I paint the same pattern as on the neck. When I'm done with that, I repaint the entire dragon with a lighter shade, reducing the opacity. I paint the top of the head with a slightly darker shade of orange, and then I paint the scales with a dark turquoise color. This way, the two colors blend, creating a third one that I can use as well. Now I paint these color variations on the scales on the back. The lower parts are still not light enough, so I apply another coat with a lighter color. Next up, I'd focus on the wings, they will be darker than the body, but I still add the lighter shade on top. Then I lightly color the veins with a purple shade. I join the gums and paint them with a pale red or pink color using the paint bucket. I also paint the tongue but in a slightly darker shade. I paint the eyes with a yellow color and color the pupils and area around them with an orange shade. I made the pupils darker.
Using the eyedropper tool, I select the colors from the head and apply them to the spikes. Additionally, I paint the tips of the spikes with a lighter shade. I follow the same process for the other spikes and the clothes. Ok, painting is done. Now I export it. Before exporting the dragon, I will join the parts that have similar materials. The head and body will be one object, and the gums, tongue, teeth, and the skin between the fingers will be separate objects. This is necessary to be able to adjust the materials of these parts separately in Blender. The gums and tongue will have a wetter, glossier appearance, while the wings will have a subsurface scattering applied. Of course, if you increase the metalness value during painting, it will already have a glossy look, but this allows for later modifications. Once I'm done with this, I can proceed with exporting. When exporting, I can choose the file format at the bottom and on the top right I can choose whether to export all objects or just the selected object. For now I will export everything in the FBX file format. I can enter the file name in the field above the file format and choose where to save the file on the left side. On the right side I can choose to export with vertex color or texture or I can select to export only the model without anything else. Vertex Colors is quite straightforward. I can't make any adjustments here, it simply exports the painted colors, which can be displayed and modified in the shader editor in Blender to adjust material settings. In ShapeLab, rendering is based on vertex colors, so if I export vertex colors, I will see the same result in Blender as in ShapeLab, and the details won't be lost. In the case of texture export, ShapeLab embeds the vertex colors into a texture, which, if the texture has low resolution, can result in the loss of some details in areas where there was detailed painting. For textures, I have two options, embed in 3D file or export separately. With the latter, the texture isn't embed within the file itself. Instead, the image are placed directly next to the file. It's as if the image are sitting there alongside the 3D model, not hidden inside the same file. However, it's important to note that in this setup the vertex colors won't be saved. Unlike vertex color, the PBR properties are stored in the textures here, rather than in the vertices. When exporting textures, you have the option to automatically simplify the output of your model. In this case, the application will duplicate your model, slightly reduce its complexity and then generate the UI map for the textures using the simplified version. For now I will export with vertex colors. Ok, we are done with the export, let's continue in Blender. Now, before importing the dragon, let's create the background. I switch to edit mode and select one of the top edges, then press delete and choose vertices. This way I obtain the floor and the background at the same time, but I would like that to be a curved surface instead of a right angle. So I select the other edge, press Ctrl B and use the mouse scroll wheel to add more edges, making it smooth. I switch to object mode and scale it to elongate. I will color it later. Now I import the dragon and scale it to fit onto the background.
In the bottom left corner I switch to the shader editor and add the vertex color. To do this I click on the add tab, then select input, choose color attribute and connect it to the dragon. I repeat this process to the other body parts. The eye, gums and tongue have wet, shiny surfaces, so I adjust the specular value to be higher than the roughness. For the teeth, I slightly increase the roughness. For the body, you need to experiment with these values to achieve the desired look, but it won't be as glossy as the gums and tongue. For the spikes, I increase the roughness slightly compared to the body. The wings are thin membranes, so I try to convey this by increasing the subsurface value and setting the subsurface color to red. To make the subsurface effect more visible, I switch to cycles in the render properties, set the max samples to 200 and enable the noise. Next, let's work on the lighting. I will set up the lights in a way that the parts closer to the camera are illuminated more brightly. The parts in the background will be darker and more subdued, directing the viewer's attention and creating a sense of depth for the dragon. First, I position the camera at the desired angle. Now I split the screen into two parts. In one part I display the camera view and in the other I position the lights. There is already a light source in the scene, so I delete it. I create an area light, adjust its power, switch it to rectangle and position it to illuminate the dragon from the side and slightly from above.
I clone it using Shift D, move it behind the dragon. And clone it once more, placing it in front of the dragon. I place a point light near the head of the dragon and adjust its power. I also adjust the radius to avoid hair shadows. Smaller radius values result in sharper shadows. The rear light will have a slightly reddish color. I'm done and ready to render. I click on the render tab in the top left corner, then select render image. Once the rendering is complete, I click on the image tab, choose save as and save the image. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series and found it helpful. Is there anything you would do differently or any other tips you have? Let us know in the comments and if you create the dragon, feel free to share it on our discord server. Thank you for joining me and happy sculpting to you.